Senator Jill Lawrence. Senator Fisher, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to both of you gentlemen for your service to the people of this country. During and after the retrograde, President Biden touted over the horizon counterterrorism operations as our new strategy to deal with the terrorist threat in Afghanistan. I expressed serious concerns with this approach, including directly to you, General McKinsey, uh, for CENTCOMs um, during that CENTCOM posture hearing last April, but was repeatedly told by the administration that challenges associated with this strategy could be overcome. General McKinsey, have we conducted any over-the-horizon strikes against ISIS-K targets in Afghanistan since August of last year? Senator, we have conducted no strikes in Afghanistan. Would you agree that without sustained CT pressure, terrorist groups are more able to focus on planning and preparing for external attacks? I, w I would agree with that statement. Do we have any information on terrorist planning in Afghanistan? Senator, I have considerable information on that, and I'm prepared to brief you in great detail in the closed session that will follow. I look, I look forward to hearing your brief on that. Uh, General McKinsey, in an interview with the Associated Press in December, you stated that we're probably at about 1 or 2 percent of the capabilities we once had to look into Afghanistan. Um, will you be telling us about that in classified as well? I will, uh, the brief I give you, I believe, will be exhaustive in all the, in all the disciplines of intelligence what we had, what we have now, what the difference in those are, and you, you'll, you'll be able to draw your own very stark and clear conclusions from that. Is your conclusion um, about the strategy that we have in dealing with the terrorist threat um, that we are effective or not effective in sustaining that CT pressure on the groups? It's going to take a little time for that to play out. I believe that, as you noted earlier, sustained CT pressure is what prevents groups from being able to, to grow, to train, to think about plotting beyond their immediate survival. For example, up and down the Euphrates River Valley in Iraq and Syria, ISIS is unable to think beyond surviving that night or the next night. In places where they don't have that question of immediate personal survival, then the threat begins to grow. Uh, but I'll, I would like to talk about that in the closed session if I can, ma'am. Okay. In October, Under Secretary Call told this committee that we could see ISIS-K generate the capability to conduct external operations, including against the United States, in somewhere between six and 12 months, and that was five months ago. Today, in your written testimony, you stated that, quote, the Department of Defense assesses ISIS-K could establish an external attack capability against the United States and our allies in 12 to 18 months, but possibly sooner if the group experiences unanticipated gains in Afghanistan, end quote. What has caused this intelligence estimate to shift from October when Secretary Call made those comments uh, to what you're telling us today? Again, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the closed session. But uh, the, figure, the, the period I gave, which is 12 to 18 months uh, for ISIS-K, represents our best whole of, whole of intelligence community thought thinking on this. And, 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 and it does change over time as we see groups gather, as we see groups fall apart. Uh, but I'll be able to give you a lot more detail on that uh, in the closed session. Okay, let me shift gears a little bit then with you, and we'll continue the CT in, uh, in closed session. Um, we look at Iran's proxies throughout CENCOM AOR, and they continue to pose a significant threat to our partners and also to our own forces in the region. What more do you think can be done to deter Iran from their malign activities? I, I think uh, we've established a very clear set of red lines with Iran, and I think as a result of that, over the last several months, their attacks have tapered off, particularly in Iraq, which I believe... Iran views as the principal battleground for confronting the United States and our partners in the region. And we've been able to do that by very effective, by increasingly effective counter UAS and other systems to defend ourselves. Uh, and at the same time, uh, they're finding it increasingly difficult to gain any kind of political traction in, with the government of Iraq. 
I think for a long time, Iran frankly tried to pursue a political solution in Iraq that is not open to them anymore. And do you believe that that we are um, that we have a good working relationship with our partners in the area in providing them defense against missiles and drones? I believe that we do. I, you know, I work very hard at the military to military channel with my peers, the chiefs of defense in each of these countries. I believe we do have a very good relationship with them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Fisher. Senator.